So I was looking at mainly the E46 and the E92 M3 or E90 M3. The reason I was looking at those two was this was the last naturally aspirated or only naturally aspirated V8 that they made with the dual clutch. And I was looking at the E46 because of its S54 symphony that it makes with the airbox on the exhaust. Even though it may be slower, but it was a good car. But this landed in my lap when a friend's of friends was selling it and I had to have it. So my name is Kosan, my first name, but I go by Q. And this is my E92 M3 right behind me. I got into cars because of Hot Wheels. When I was a kid, I used to be a stubborn kid. I wanted every car I saw at the grocery store, the mall, wherever, and my dad would just listen to me and buy me everything. Then cars came out, and that got me into cars even more, the racing aspect of it. And when I got a little bit older, Dell and Compact were selling a lot of computers. I got Underground 2 on that and the PlayStation 2. And that got me into modifying cars. Remember the 350Z they had on there, and then you had those big Escalade you can modify. But yeah, that got me into cars even more. Got older, at least was living in Pakistan from 2007 to 2013, and my dad taught me how to drive when I was 12 years old in his right-hand drive diesel Toyota Corolla. And then from the rest is history. From then when I started driving, started driving a lot of K cars, and when I moved to the US, drove a bunch of hand-me-downs till I could finally afford my first sports car right there. And I've had that for three years now. It's pretty straightforward when you go from right-hand drive to left-hand drive, just gotta make sure you're driving on the right side of the road. It's pretty easy to figure out where the gear selector is supposed to go because it's in the exact same spot. But my biggest hurdle, this may be funny to some people, was getting used to the wiper and indicator stocks. Because when I was starting to drive here, when I got my license and I'd be taking a left or right, I would turn on the wipers. Being someone who's from Pakistan, Euro cars there means a high level of class. And when I moved here, I didn't realize how attainable they were. When I got to a very nice financial standpoint in life, I started looking at buying my first sports car and actually I was looking at JDM because there's a lot of JDM cars in Pakistan as well. So I was looking at 25 year old or older um, right hand drive, JZX90 Mark IIs, I was looking at E46 M3s, I was looking at E92s. I had a friend who had an E46 M3, he had done a full CSL build on it, and he may have influenced me a little bit more to go towards the BMW, and I would always been around BMWs since high school. I like my Mercedes, I like my Audis, but I like my BMWs even more. So let's start with the front, like you said. So on the front, I have the GT4 V1 lip from Carbon Boost. I got these carbon canards actually off of eBay. They actually definitely help, I can feel it. On leading to the side of the car, the wheels, I have TE37 SLs in 18. And the brakes behind the wheels are actually a retrofit off of the Porsche Cayenne Turbos here, specifically the Brembo 18Zs. Leading to the back of the car, I have a M Performance carbon spoiler that I bought from here actually as well, did a pickup on it, and a Ridgeline Motorsport GT4 wing. On the interior, the only few things that I have done are just for driver convenience and maybe something that's cool, is I have added a Mr. 12 volt CarPlay um, retrofit. That way you don't have to give up your screen. You still have the BMW um, infotainment retained. I have a magnetic paddle shifters. So suspension mods, I have TC K-Line double adjustable coilovers. And alongside of the coils, I have the Turner thrust arms, I have the Turner end links, and I have a full refresh of control arms so purchased right here from ECS. Some parts are from TRW and some parts are from Delphi. I got the toe arms, guide arms, got the, actually I got the ECS trailing arms in the back as well. ECS has actually helped me out a lot. It's very fortunate that ECS is local. This year I have done a bunch of deferred slash preventive maintenance and I'm going to be tracking the car in August and I wanted to get ahead of it. Yeah, so ECS has definitely helped me get my parts much faster than I would be able to get elsewhere sometimes. Under the hood we have the Eventury Plenum with the elbow for the intake. We have Brinkle red valve covers, that was part of the maintenance. Might as well just get that done and out the way. I have a Active Auto Works Catalyst dual resonated mid pipe, 
racetrack use only. And I have a Fujitsubo, which is a Japanese company, discontinued titanium exhaust. <laughs> Unfortunate thing about the car community nowadays is a lot of takeovers taking over. People are getting hurt, can't really go to a car show anymore without someone ruining it for everyone else. And sometimes it's just not worth it to be holding it on the street because you're putting yourself in danger and other people in danger. As I'm maturing more, I'm starting to understand, you know, it's best to keep things on the track. You learn the car even more in a controlled environment. And you may think you're a great street driver around curvy roads, but when you get to a track, and you see other people that have been going to tracks for years, then you realize you're not, you may not be the best driver. So I'm trying to learn that side of the motorsport now. I would always recommend to people when they get into cars, first off, when you're buying a car, always do a PPI. You wanna make sure you're getting yourself a good car. Once you get that car, join Facebook groups. Just try to network with people, look at the meets, go out to meets and just talk to people. That's how you'll get to know people. You'll make very good friends. Actually, a lot of my friend groups I have met because of going out to meets and events, and I consider some of them my best friends. So to new car people, just get the car, if financially doable, and just go out to meets, try to go to track days. If not, even do autocross, very cheap to get into that. And yeah, just go out and have fun and drive your cars. There's still quite a bit left to do on this car. Some people may look at it and be like, it looks pretty done to me, but I still wanna do seats. I may even consider a roll cage. I would definitely wanna change out the exhaust system to like maybe a Veltronic titanium. I would like to consider a supercharger kit. May not, I definitely like the NA aspect of it and having the adventure intake, just hearing the throttle bodies open up. May keep it, I don't know. Yeah, this car is actually never leaving the stable unless shit hits the fence. <laughs>